I was saying the adult one is probably an, uh... Okay, Chris, name a second thing you might find. <laughs> Welcome to PictoFacts. I'm Jesse Eisman. I've put together a metric butt ton of image-based trivia games, and then I invited some comedians to play them. Contestants, I'm gonna show each of you a real hand-drawn schematic for a patent that someone inexplicably felt compelled to file. Anna Huntley, what is this device? That is clearly a pen that also doubles as a vibrator and triples as a missile. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Chris Allen, what do you think this is? I really think this is a three-part dildo. Yes, it's for couples. The top is a dunce hat. So whoever <laughs> whoever comes last, you have to wear that hat. And uh, yeah, both both ends go uh, in their respective places. Whatever you have, it's 2022. I don't know. Yep, that little screw thing there, that's the uh, battery pack. It takes uh, the same battery you put in a watch. I would like to take this moment to point out that Chris is actually successfully married. Success. So congratulations <laughs> Thank you. on yes. making that happen. Elliot Duffy, what do you think this is? I'm gonna say that it's a sewing needle, mainly because uh, I see that it was patented in 91, which was a big year for sewing. It's so easy to sew, so pretty. Get to sewing. All right, the answer is, it's a ballpoint pen with condom storage. That is the name of it what? on the patent. <laughs> oh. Ballpoint pen with condom storage. Anna Huntley, you got first place. You called this, it's a pen, but you did get the sexual element to it. Elliot, I'm giving you second place. All right. Um, it seemed you found you kind of glommed on to the weird uh, condom section. It wouldn't be the first time I glommed onto a condom. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Allen, yes. what is going on here? Oh, this is clearly, clearly something that I, I don't approve of. This is a 1950s anti-cannabis ad. Now this young girl has been smoking so much weed that now she wants to get her little bunny high. This is what can happen to your sweet little girl. She's trying to shotgun a three gram blunt to a rabbit that her aunt bought her for Easter. So this is an anti-cannabis ad 100%. Elliot, what do you think is going on here? I think this is a stuffed rabbit with a built-in whistle. <laughs> Very good. Anna, what do you think is going on here in this patent? Sure. Static? I think this is a, a, a way to uh, deliver medication in a really fun and healthy way for a child uh, because kissing rabbits is a, a thing that all children really ought to do. I couldn't agree more. As a father myself, I want all my kids to kiss some rabbits. I'll tell you what the answer is. It's a suckable teddy bear, technically a wearable drink holder featuring an animal-shaped body member and, naturally, a protrudence member formed in the shape of an animal face. Naturally. A suckable what? Protrudence member? I feel like you guys are, like, getting obsessed with the details. You're gonna suck juice out of the bunny rabbit. <laughs> Chris, I'm giving you first place on this oh, one. Okay. Because, as it was a suckable teddy bear, your idea was all about sucking not quite a liquid, but, but a smoke is very close to a liquid. Your brain was in the right place. You were sucking something out of that Little stuff bunny. Oh yeah, some goodness. <laughs> some kind of goodness. <laughs> Anna, to the same degree, you, you were on the right track as well. You thought it was a medication delivery device. You only got second place because it was not a vice. See, juice, weed, those are, those are vices. Ah, okay. Medication is good for you. You thought that this thing would be good for a child and that was a big mistake. Yeah, you gotta suck out of the rabbit and yeah. that was an oversight on my part. Gotta, gotta suck, suck that, that rabbit. rabbit. <laughs> Let's move on to the final patent schematic. <laughs> Elliot, what is up with this? Hellish little cherub. What an unfortunate day to have eyes. <laughs> uh, well, this is clearly a, a autom automaton, as they would call him. The little wooden boy. A, a living machine to resemble a, a baby, maybe, that you've lost and you need to replace quickly. Anna, what do you think is going on with this? Thing. Well, if I know anything about babies, it is that they're real stupid. I should know. I have friends who have them. And in this instance, what is clearly happening is, you know, babies being stupid don't always know how to, you know, do the thing that babies are supposed to do, which is crawl everywhere. They need a little instruction. So this is a baby crawling robot or the baby 
Crawlbot. Chris, what do you think this device is? This is a picture of a surgery that you give babies that end up with polio and can't walk anymore. So you replace their bones with gears and shit. So <laughs> is, is your kid no longer able to walk? Well, guess what? We can, we can fix that and put wheels and pulleys inside of his body so they can crawl. Well, I'll tell you what it really is. This is Geo Pemberton Clark's Natural Creeping Baby Doll. And it brings me no joy to report there was a requirement at the time to create a working model. Oh! oh. Look at the eye. <laughs> Why does that baby have eyes like uh, Forrest Whitaker? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that thing. Look at the paw. It looks like a goddamn animal. Yeah. Look at that paw. It looks like it's going to tell me some riddles. <laughs> Points time. Elliot, you got first place. Your idea was the closest to it being uh, a recreational device. Anna, you got second place. Yours definitely had the spirit of a toy that moves. Chris, love it. I wish I could give you points for the vivid picture you painted with your words of Thank uh, you. opening up a baby and taking out the guts and putting it in gears. All right, you've made it to round two. Did that fill the gnawing emptiness you feel deep inside? This one's all about fast food, specifically the marketing ploys they use to trick us into eating wet, wet beef. beef. Anna, what the hell was Burger King bragging about with this 2020 Moldy Whopper campaign? What was the point of this ad campaign? The point of this ad campaign was the fact that if uh, you leave a burger out long enough, it will in fact generate penicillin. Wow. And as we know, there is an antibiotic shortage and antibiotics are becoming less and less effective. Burger King no. is stepping in to uh, the role of world savior here. So you know what, Burger King, hats off. My hat is off to you. I don't have a hat, but if I did, it would be off. Chris, what do you think they were trying to accomplish with this advertising campaign? I gotta say, Burger King has really slid off the last 10 years and I actually got this same burger a week ago. <laughs> so the only thing they were really doing is show you how their food actually f***ing looks now. Elliot, what do you think is going on with this ad campaign? I think I genuinely know. Okay. I think that this is a comparison against a McDonald's burger, which would have more preservatives and would not mold as quickly. Interesting. Braxton! All right, I'll tell you what it is. BK claims to have removed 8,500 tons of artificial preservatives from their products and proved it by documenting the putrefaction of their premier burger. They say it increased sales by 14% and won them an obscene amount of advertising awards. <laughs> so there you go. Elliot, you nailed it. You got first place. Yes. Anna, I'm giving you second place because yours was, uh, was in a very similar vein of, of trying to make their disgusting slop healthy for the public. That's fine. I hate Burger King. I really have a disdain for Burger King. We're sponsored this, by, you can't, we're sponsored this episode brought to you by Burger King. I love Burger King. King. It's the best. Yeah. Suck down your slop. Burger King. In 2017, Burger King Israel sold adult meals as a sexy little Valentine's Day promotion. Chris, name one adult toy you might find in the adult meal. I would say in the adult one, there's probably an... Uh... We might need a different take. <laughs> I think that's the one that I can't do. Okay, Chris, name a second thing you might find in the adult meal. And then there's condoms. Condoms? Yes. Right, okay. Uh, excellent. Elliot, what's one adult toy you might find in the adult meal? Uh, I think a fake ass with sesame seeds on it. Ooh. <laughs> Fake What's the fake made out of, if I may ask? Uh, rubber, a silicone rubber, something soft oh, okay. and jiggly. <laughs> okay, so it's gotta be jiggly, it's gotta be soft, but with real sesame seeds? Real sesame seeds. Great, Anna, what do you think you're gonna find in these uh, little Anal beads, fun Ooh. for the whole family. Ooh, yes. <laughs> we were all thinking that, and only you were brave enough to say it. For about six hours, horrible, ironic boyfriends could surprise their loved ones with either a head massager, a blindfold, or a feather duster. A feather duster, that's just, to clean? What's sexy about that? The PictoFax Game Show is proud to present a heartwarming moment between Chris and Ellie. Have you ever had one lightly grazed against your testicle, son? <laughs> or butthole? That's what a feather duster does. Yeah, I, I take it back, it's really sexy. <laughs> I would, yeah, by the cardigan, he's never, he's not into butt play. This is not a butt play sweater. <laughs> now, jean jacket. That's butt play. This guy's into butt stuff, you can tell. No, <laughs> Okay, so, uh, uh... actually owned by a butt place. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, that's why they, McDonald's has the ball pits, right? Yeah, there you go. There you it's go. a happy ending meal. <laughs> the most sexual of all pits, the ball pit. So I'm giving first place to Anna because it was the most family friendly. As you can see, these are the Clearly. tamest sex toys ever invented. Look at that. Chris, you get second place. Yes. Condom is like the second most, uh, or the fourth most tame sexual device. Well, how would you feel if you if you were like, you ready to do it? And he's like, hey, would you mind handing me a sexual device? Well, in that case, I would just like take out my pen and yeah. unscrew, <laughs> unscrew it and pull one out. McDonald's used to sell hot dogs back in the 90s. They even brought them back to the breakfast menu for some reason in the 2010s. What did they call their tubed meat? Elliot. What do they call, what does McDonald's call their hot dog? McWiener. Anna, what does McDonald's call their hot dog? Well, I mean, that is clearly a carrot, so they just call it that. They're like, it's the, you know what? It's the McCarrot. The Mc... 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 Carrot. <laughs> the McCarrot. You got the I, McWiener? I know how to... I know how to talk. Well, it's totally fine, because that's not a word that most people probably ever said. You found your way through it perfectly well. Chris, what do you think they called their hot dog? A McDong. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what they called it. Ray Kroc vowed never to sell hot dogs, but after he died, McDonald's barely waited for his greasy corpse to congeal before they unleashed the McHot Dog. Uh, how boring. They have an entire marketing department. They could have gone with, let's say, a McWiener or a McCarrot. Chris, I'm giving this one to you, the yes. McDong, because the McDong. just letter for letter, you almost nailed it. I did. <laughs> and I'm giving you second place because the McCarrot is also like kind of boring. <laughs> I like how this guy's wearing a suit. That's nice too. <laughs> so what I do, I make six figures. Let me run to McDonald's and get a goddamn hot dog. I genuinely <laughs> thought you were talking about the bun. Uh, <laughs> no, even like the bun looks a, weird. You're calling the hot dog a sir or yeah. a guy? Yeah, it's, like a, it's a baked potato. It's, yeah, weird. it is a baked potato. It's weird. What's happening? Now you guys are thinking. We're thinking outside the bun. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, all right. Nice. I like how, you know, all right, so some businessmen will kind of like crack a tall, a tall boy on the way home from work sitting on the bus or the subway. Not this guy. Not this guy. He <laughs> grabs a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> this round is all about improbable celebrity connections. I'll show you a famous person and then a picture of that person's face mashed together with an unlikely peer, collaborator, or lover. You'll guess who that second celebrity is. This is renowned actor Tommy Lee Jones, and this is Tommy Lee Jones crossed with his college roommate at Harvard. Anna, hit me first. Who do you think Tommy Lee Jones' roommate was in college? That's Al Gore. That's, okay, so you're saying Al Gore. Chris, who do you think Tommy Lee Jones' roommate was? Al Gore. <laughs> <laughs> Al Gore, you're gonna, you guys are, you know what happens when you hitch your boats together, you might both sink. Ah, uh, that's fine. <laughs> Good, we'll go down together. This is the point of this game. You guys are all becoming friends. Elliot, who do you think Tommy Lee Jones' roommate was? Al Violence. <laughs> <laughs> Al who? Violence. I don't know, is I that can't person? say gore, but that's clearly who it is. <laughs> okay. You know who I mean. Well, I'll tell you what. Long before he invented the internet, Al Gore <laughs> used to cook whole turkeys with Tommy Lee Jones in their dorm room. Is this a mashup of them two? Mm -hmm. Okay, because man, that, that's uh, pretty wild. It's like they got together, instead of having a kid, they had a dad. Ooh, a daddy, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get these points. Uh, Anna, you got first place because you nailed it. Um, Chris, you got second place because you also nailed it. Elliot, unfortunately, got third place, even though you showed real gusto you, by You threatened us with <laughs> boat bumping talk. Yes. <laughs> You said we'd all sink, and now who's the only one sinking? Oh. The one guy with a, with a new original idea. That's a really good point. I would like to retake that and give you guys all first place. Oh, oh I'll take that. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's there you right. Go. I'm happy for you guys. I'm happy for you. Do you guys want to hang out after the show? No. No. This is acting legend Marlon Brando, and this is Brando crossed with one of his many, many lovers. Chris, who do you think Marlon Brando bone? Man, I have no idea who this could be. I'm gonna go out on the limb and say it might be Richard Pryor. Quincy Jones once said of Brando, he'd fuck anything, he'd fuck a mailbox. Elliot, who do you think Marlon Brando f Well, after that, hint, I'm gonna say Quincy Jones. <laughs> what kind of mailbox? Are we talking M-A-L-E box? Like a butthole? <laughs> that would be a mailbox. Uh, sir, we call that a bussy. A bus. <laughs> Jones then name-checked James Baldwin, Marvin Gaye, and our mystery celebrity. Anna, who do you think the mystery celebrity is? You know, I'm just gonna throw it out there. I think, uh, I think it was Mr. Ed. Hello. Well, let's find out together. 
Marlon Brando and Richard Pryor were two of the most prolific bisexuals of their day. Pryor's widow has confirmed the relationship, saying, it was the 70s, enough cocaine and good music, one could f a radiator and send it flowers in the morning. Chris, you nailed it. Richard, so, so did, first place yeah. goes so to Chris. So did Brando. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it like Richard Brando. Richard Brando? I'm gonna give you a blow job. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, not only just for that impression, but fantastic impression, you get second place uh, because you named a human. Uh, <laughs> And a third place, but again, Mr. Ed, I'm gonna fall asleep tonight dreaming of Marlon Brando and Mr. Ed. Hello. So mm. thank you. Did they show Mr. Ed's dong? Find out next time on <laughs> Pickle Facts, the game show. Final one before the final round, okay. <clears throat> This is best-selling author and pro wrestling star, Mick Foley, AKA Mankind. And this is Mick Foley crossed with his old high school wrestling teammate. Elliot, who did Mankind used to wrestle with? I'm gonna guess Richard Gere. Anna, who was Mick Foley's wrestling mentor? Bob Ross. Bob Ross. <laughs> Almost definitely gonna be closer than Mr. Ed. Chris, who did Mankind used to wrestle with? Well, it's gotta be um, Ultimate Warrior, hands down. I know for a fact I'm big in wrestling. I know they went to college together. I'm 100% right. Well, I'll tell you what, renowned jock, Kevin James That's is the I reason meant. that Mankind exists today. Foley has called Kevin James, quote, the toughest kid at school. Chris, I'm gonna give it to you. Ultimate warrior, great wrestler. Kevin James, incredible wrestler, apparently. Oh, wow. You got first place. And a great comic. Anna, you got second place. Bob Ross and Kevin James both have the same, we'll say, unthreatening energy. I like how unthreatening energy is a new way to say white. That's, that's uh, pretty cool. That's a great <laughs> line. That's great. Keep that in. No! Keep it! <laughs> no! I'll retake it! <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing against white people. You got great money. <laughs> <laughs> For our final round, we're gonna f the script. This is facto picks. You're each being given a fact that I ostensibly don't know. You'll do your best to describe it to an AI image generator, and I'll take a look at whatever it spits out and try to guess your fact. For this round, you're actually gonna wager points, so we need to know how many points you've got. That unfortunately means we have to kick it to the score bear. <laughs> Score bear, how many points does Anna have? I'm gonna wager them all. All of them. I think I gotta go all in. Oh, you guys! Jesus. Okay. Wow. You got it? Uh huh. All right, you you all can turn around. Oh my oh. God. Wait, what? This is Richard Gere's asshole. This is the inside of Richard Gere's asshole looks like a like a PetSmart. The guy on the top right looks like um. Ben Stiller. So I'm gonna say that Ben Stiller was once in a romantic relationship with a rat. So close. Thank you. So close. Yes, the real, the the actual so close answer is in New, New York, York City, City, humans bite other humans more than rats bite humans. Oh, that's, yeah, I see the biting now. Rat watches a man biting a man. That is such a, you know what? That's the AI's fault. These are awful images. <laughs> I won't be able to sleep tonight. Is that, is it in the middle? Is he blowing a kiss? Like what, what is, that is terrifying. I don't like this. Also, I mean, it's like, uh, I think like his, somebody's finger has trans, in the middle of somebody's finger has transformed into part of the rat. And oh, that God. is my favorite oh, part of the situation. I need you to turn it, around. Oh yeah, look away. Oh. Okay. All right, I can turn around. What's up? Oh no, why? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? I'm gonna say ancient Romans um, used to apply lipstick to their statues. To make so them look close! <laughs> so close! What's the real one? How in ancient Rome men would wear, would wear lipstick. Kind All right, so it. like this is a high status man or a low status oh, man? Oh, this is a high status man. This is a high, this is good bussy right here. <laughs> <laughs> men wearing lipstick, ancient Rome. Honestly, really good prompt. All right, Chris, great job. Thank Elliot, you. you're up. All right, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh wow, this is a disaster. We're ready? <laughs> All right, yeah. A what? What are we looking at? <laughs> this How do you is the do most this? sexual thing I've seen today. Uh, this is gonna be some sort of grocery store and um, it's selling pickled goods. Um, the first vegetable to be pickled was a blanched pumpkin. Not at all close. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Think it over, Elliot. <laughs> What's the real fact? The real fact 
is that in 1971, oh, yeah. more Cher dolls were sold than Barbie dolls. <laughs> Cher doll? Yeah. So, uh... so my prompt was a, uh, a shelf full of shares. <laughs> and there's not a single share on any of those shelves. <laughs> this AI is clearly uncultured. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike all the yogurt it's picturing. <laughs> yeah, all the yogurt. Nice, pickles. dude. <laughs> um, awesome, Elliot, thank you. All right, folks, the moment you've been waiting for your entire lives. First place goes to Chris. Absolutely knocked it out of the park. As usual. I knew that it was a lipstick Roman. I thought it was more of a sex doll or something, but you were talking about actual human Romans. Anna, you got second place. Yours was also uh, eerily accurate. You guys have like kind of a weird mind meld with AI, um, which I think will serve all of us well when they turn on humanity. Unfortunately, Elliot, that means you lost this one. Elliot, you're at zero, sadly. Anna, you got second place, so that means you got zero points added or taken away, which leaves you solidly in second place to our friend Chris, doubled his points. <laughs> Chris, you win the golden stethoscope oh, I, worn oh. by Dr. Jordan Breeding oh, himself. Oh, wow, I always wanted to be a doctor. Thank you so much. Whatever I'll be doing bad. mammograms after the show. Okay. That is definitely what that's for. That's what it's for. <laughs> put it right on the titty. You heard it here, folks. You put it right on the titty. Right on the titty. <laughs> Thanks for watching Pick the Facts, the game show. Join us next time. Whatever that'll be.